Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank the Almighty God for a wonderful Sunday, a blessed one indeed, for His goodness, for His greatness, for His love and care over our lives. This morning, we are grateful unto Him who has granted us once again a Sunday. We also want to use this opportunity to thank His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Ghana, for his bravery leadership over this nation. Today marks 7 June, of which in his term for address, the reopening of churches began. And he humbly asks that today must be dedicated for prayers for this nation, for the Lord's grace and mercy in challenging times like what we have now. This morning, I humbly want to share with you a word that will, uh, God has laid on my heart to share about the four background, the foreground and the background of life. During these times, what people would like to listen is that is there any vaccine for coronavirus? Everyone is worried, the whole world, everybody is thinking about this pandemic and what is our the solutions. So everyone is looking for solutions about it. And this morning, the Lord Jesus has a solution to that. So what I humbly want to share with you, I've titled it The Foreground and the Background of Life. The foreground is the focus of things in this world. The foreground is things that you see. The foreground, when we talk about foreground, it's things that are very closer, things that are very nearer to you, things that you can pinpoint, things that you can watch, this kind you can feel. And so the focus and attention of foregrounds are many. The COVID-19 is a foreground. It's the things that we see, things that we touched. You see people dying. You see people in difficulties people on ventilators, people at the hospitals. Cemeteries are being opened. You see cops getting there. You see graves that are open. And so this become a foreground. And because of that, it brings panic and fear. And so the foregrounds of life are very, very fearful. And this is the time that we are in. As we speak today, we have a number of about 6 million over 6 million cases, 6,752,049 7, cases in the world, over 395,233 deaths. And so this is the foreground. In Ghana alone, as at 4th June, you have 9,462 confirmed cases. Recoveries, 3,547. And this data, I picked it from the Ghana Health um, uh, website. And then you have about 44 deaths. And so, when we st st the COVID started in Ghana, it started with death of one, now it is 44. The cases also have risen from somewhere when it was 300 to now about 9,000. These are foregrounds of life. And these are very scary. And these are the foregrounds of life now that we face is that you are not able to touch people. You are not able to embrace people. You are not able to see people as you see. We all were sleeping, started a nice life. And then in January, we heard of a case called coronavirus in far east China, Wuhan city. It was very far. Lo and behold, not knowing it was coming closer to the world. Now more than 200 countries have seen these cases and are affected. And it has brought panic. The WHO have declared it as a pandemic. So it's a foreground. Now in times like this, it does, this sickness or this virus does not know a child. It does not know the rich or the poor. It does not know the vulnerable or the brave or the giant. So it's a foreground. Everybody is scared. There's no laxity of life. You are not having normal life as you used to do. 
So it became a foreground. And everybody's cry is that, when will this come to an end? When will this come to an end? Vaccines have been developed, have been tested over nations. And everyone's anxiety, or let's say happiness, or so one day morning will be a great that, oh, there have been a medicine developed so that I'll be free. People are not able to travel. People are not able to travel. Borders are being closed. And you don't have the kind of freedom that you used to be to have. So then what is life in this? What is life in this at all? So what is the, the essence of man moving around and doing business and making money? And everything? Well, How do you enjoy it? Everybody's on no smacks. Whether you are the ugly or you are beautiful, you are always on no smacks. You are with sanitizers. You are moving around, washing your hands. And Was this the life that you were experiencing before? No. Brother, sister, you are now in the foreground of life where you are seeing visible things and you thought that is much change. I would like to read a scripture from Matthew chapter 6 verse 25 which talks about some of these foregrounds of life. And as teachers, Jesus was teaching and Matthew chapter 6 he started from Matthew chapter 5 the teachings of him to his disciples and then he came to Matthew chapter 6 where the background spoke about um, the, the Pharisees being hypocrites and then he also taught about um, fasting and prayers so when he goes to verse 25 um, he made a statement that uh, I'm reading from the New Living Translation and said this is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the bears. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns. For your heavenly father feeds them. And aren't you more valuable to him than they are? Can your worries add a single moment to your life? And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. Yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautiful as they are. The verse 30 says, And if God cares so wonderfully for wild flowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? So do not worry about the th these things saying, what we will eat and what we will drink and what we will wear. These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your heavenly father already knows your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. And the verse 34 is my emphasis. So do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will bring his own worries. Tomorrow will bring his own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. So Today's trouble is enough for today. The COVID-19 that has brought a foreground of life and challenging and fear and panic and so is enough for today. Today's worry is not for Don't think about what is coming tomorrow. Let us absorb what we have now with COVID-19 because it's enough. So foregrounds are very panic. Foregrounds being uncertainty. A foregrounds bring certain kind of life that you you visage, and so because of that, your focus is always on it, and that bring fear to it. The other side of it is that the Bible is telling that Jesus was telling his disciples that they shouldn't worry about everyday life and things they will eat and drink because the Lord cares. There are certain things that when you focus on them. He give you that comfort. So in this trying moments, in these challenging times, in this time that we have started church with 100 people, 25 people, having distancing, you might not, it is not a normal times and other things. These times are challenging times. And what really will suck you and hold you is for you to understand that the Lord Jesus says that we shouldn't worry. He made a statement 
that is very, very interesting here is that look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them. So when he taught the disciples how to pray, and then he, he told them the formula of prayer, and then he came here, he made emphasis that he holds the economy of birds in his hands. The economy of birds. The Lord is able to feed more than 9 million and over birds in his hands. The Lord Jesus has the economy of fishes in his hands. He has the economy. So in this time, when the lockdown came and people's movement in Ghana was not, people were thinking about what they would eat, what they would drink because you are not able to go to work. You are not able to have the freedom that you are supposed to have. And so it brings more worries. Your children were not able to go to school. You have a lot of things and so many kind of uh, restrictions that you are not used to. That brings worries. But the Lord Jesus is saying that he has the economy of birds in his hands. He's able to feed all the birds in this world who do not work, who do not harvest. And once you think about that you have Jesus and you trust in him, who have the economy of bearing his sons, the economies of lions. When you enter into the bush and you see the lion every morning being chasing uh, some other animals to feed. And the Lord has been able to take care of lions that have grown more than 20. He has the economy of everything in this world in his hands and so that give must give you one of the comfort and that is why he's saying here that do not worry and your worries cannot solve the problem your worries and it is it's, it's possible it's good you must worry because it's not it's normal you are we are all human beings we will not feel comfortable when certain things do not go the way we want it but that's the lord jesus answers to that worry is that by your worry, you cannot solve the problem. You cannot add anything to it. And so do not worry about it. One of the things is that he also has the economy of flowers, the economies of nature in his hands. So when the word are saying that COVID-19 has brought a slowdown in the economy, a slowdown in everything, hunger is about to come, things are going to fall apart, it has been declared by all financial statistics that things are worse off and everything is going to tear apart that is the foreground that is what the realities are but i am here this morning to encourage you that there is also a background where i stand i stand behind me a background and the background some of them are invisible the backgrounds means that things that you don't see when you see a painting in clarity you see the picture or the paint very nicely developed and you see it very nicely. But behind the paint, the painter used some kind of artistic conceptions. He used some colors and those colors, he, when he was doing it, you were in there. So what you saw or you see is, is the clear picture, which is very beautiful. But behind this is a background and that background is the kind of a concept and the kind of things that he did that you are seeing um, very, very clear. So I want to touch more about backgrounds. And the background is the invisible things you don't see, which bring you don't see them, you don't feel them, you don't touch them. They are not closer to you, but they brings the clarity of life. So the background is things you don't see. It's not something that you feel, and so something that you touch. And so when we even pray for you that COVID-19, Lord, hears us. Because you don't see an instant medicine or a vaccine, you don't, you, don't, you don't feel it that the prayer will move on. What Jesus is narrating here or explaining here that he is the background. So when he says that, do not worry, meaning that he is the background. And when you take him as the background, as a believer, or wherever you are here and you, you are and you are listening to me, I want to introduce the background of life, which is the solid foundation, so that things that you are experiencing, things that we are all facing in life, will not scare you. So the background, it says that in verse 34 of Matthew chapter 6, 
do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will bring its own worries today's trouble is enough for today hallelujah so today's trouble is enough tomorrow will bring its worries of own uh, after COVID-19 we don't know what will come about uh, we were not there when COVID-19 developed its own it was far away as earlier indicated and it came here in Ghana here it is going somewhere it is moving somewhere tomorrow we don't know what will come uh, statistics can develop so many things uh, that it will come we have experienced uh, Ebola before. We have experienced SARS in the world. There's another time. And so the word Jesus is saying that do not worry for tomorrow. For tomorrow's worries will take care of itself. Today's problem is enough for today. So whatever we are facing is the foreground. There's a background person and he's Jesus. And he is why what I'm introducing to you that when you hold him that there's always a foreground and there's always a background. It gives you that confidence and stability. So remember this, that Jesus said that I am, the, I am in the Father and the Father is me. So you could see that Jesus describing on his teachings that he is with the Father. When you read John chapter 17 and the Father is with him. So wherever Jesus moves, he says that he moves by the authority of the father and the father is with him so at this time people are asking at this time where is god where is god i read um um from the the, the news that a pastor who is in cameroon was praying for uh, covid 19 um, believers who have believers who have been affected by covid 19 and by laying of hands um, he also got affected and then he died so people worried people are asking at this time what is happening we started praying when uh, COVID-19 developed uh, from March and February we started praying countries are praying uh, we are fasting we are praying they are continuous seeking for prayers and we have been doing all but uh, still the number in Ghana still continue to increase things are going higher the death rate so the question becomes where is God where is God is God not listening to our prayers? That is the foregrounds of life. Things that you see and they are scary. You are praying and they are not happening. You are doing things and it is not working. That is the foregrounds of life. Brother, sister, you have a foregrounds of life. That is scary. You are praying, things are not changing. You are doing it. So the question is, where is God? God is always at the background. God is always at the background. And one of the lessons that I humbly want to prove to you that is always of the background is that Jesus in John chapter 2 was at a wedding and then the wine was finished. And so they asked that whether a wine will be prepared. The mother went to Jesus. Mary went to Jesus that can, is there anything that you can do? So he asked them to fill the jars, these jars uh, with water and he prepared wine for them. The same Jesus when you read John chapter 11. So from John chapter 2, Jesus was at the wedding. John chapter 11, Jesus was there who was being informed that his best friend Lazarus was sick. And so he should come and show some kind of concern, some solidarity, some kind of uh, 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 attachment of belovedness to him so that he can heal Lazarus. But he made a statement in John chapter 11 that this sickness is not unto death. This sickness of Lazarus was not unto death. The Bible said that Jesus spent two more days. He did not go until Lazarus, his friend, got died. And so you ask a friend to you, Jesus, was being informed. In John chapter 2, when they ask you to prepare wine, so that we can have, because the wine was finished, you were able to perform some miracles, and then it got. But when you were informed that your friend was dying, his sickness was dying, you spent two days more, and you said that this sickness was not unto death. I want you to just, just look at, I've been thinking about it, that he made a statement that I will not go. This sickness 
was not unto death. But surely, Lazarus died. And he said that because for the glory of God, that's why it happened so. So Jesus spent two days. He could have gone and then go and heal Lazarus. But he spent two days more. Lazarus died before he went there and made a statement and then um, he uh, resurrected Lazarus back. So I want you to see that in this COVID time that you pray and things are not working and other things, he's always at the background. He knows everything. He understands everything. It is up to you and I to also know how God works and understand God. The way he works. He works in so many ways that man cannot understand. The COVID have been um, described by so many people that it is our sins that have brought it is something that we have done wrong that has brought this. It is because we have not been listening to God. It's so many, there are so many definitions of this pandemic that people are trying to explain. But what I got from here is that Jesus, the same Jesus who was with the Father, and is the same, the Father also was with him, as he has been stating. In John chapter 2, he prepared wine. He was the same Jesus. In John chapter 11, he did not go to resurrect Lazarus or go to heal him until Lazarus died. And it doesn't change his identity as Jesus. He was the same. So God is God. And that is what I want to come to that. God is God. He's always at the background. And he is looking at things, doing this in his own way. He sees and he hears. He knows and he cares. He sees and he hears. He knows and he cares. He supplies. He does things in his, in his own way. Nothing changes his kind of supremacy and his identity as a sovereign God in the world. What I want you to humbly just understand is that he was at the wedding and at the same time at the funeral. He doesn't change. So when things happen in the best time of life when we started January nicely, 2019 nicely. He was the same God in 2019 and the same God in COVID. He does not change his identity. Nothing happens out of his hand. Nothing gets out of his hand that he can't control. So God is here and God is one of the things that keeps you and moves you and holds you that. The same God, when you are at the foreground, he is with you. Is the same God when he's at the background. He's always, always with you. So God is good in our good days. And he's also good in our bad days. He's good in 2017. He's the same God, the great God in 2018. He's the same God in 2019. The COVID-19 that have been tagged is God's greatness. And also the same God is great in 2020. And that keeps you moving for you to know that he is always at the background. We have a God who understands what is Good Friday and we also have a, a God who understands what is Easter Sunday. The resurrection of the power of God is still, of Jesus is still. When we walk in the hills, he's there with us and when we walk in the valleys, he's there with us. The same Jesus is always with us in our foreground in the time of laughter and then in the midst of tears as we are in now, he's always with us. He sees, he hears, he knows, and he cares. And that's why I was saying that the birds, he fed them. Now, look at it, that when you have, have a father who have pets in cages and is able to feed them, will he leave his children that he has given birth? He will never, never do that. So, he is a good father who cares and then who also hears. I would like us to read uh, uh, Luke chapter 12 Luke chapter 12 verse 4 to 5 and we also pick something there Luke chapter 12 verse 4 to 5 I tell you my friends do not be afraid of those who kill the body and after that can do no more but I will show you whom you should fear fear him who after your body has been killed has the authority to throw you into hell so coronavirus or the COVID-19 that we are facing, it is the one that can kill the body, but it cannot kill the soul. But so if you want to fear COVID-19, don't get afraid because the, Jesus is saying that fear the one who is able to kill the soul 
and kill the body at the same time. Why? Because Jesus has the authority of the foreground and the background of life. Things that happen badly and things that become scary, he's in. At the background of the invisible, he knows it up. He made a statement. He was saying uh, that Peter, Peter, the Satan has asked to sift you so that he can kill you. But I've prayed for you. Jesus knows even the intentions of Satan. Jesus knows because the statement that Peter, Peter, Simon, Simon, Satan have asked that he will sift you like wheat. And so that after that, you, you kill you. But when you are able to stand, encourage your brothers. He knows even the intention of Satan. So the intention of COVID-19 and the limit that it has to get to, I want to tell you that he's at the background and he's controlling it like a remote control. When he gets a time for it to cease, he will seize it up. So what you have to know is to just believe in him, trust him, and hold him. If it, if it have come, like any pandemic like Ebola, Ebola came and it went off, SARS came and it went off, this also shall pass. So hold on, on to the Lord and then keep trust in him. One of the things that I want to tell you about life is that trusting Jesus about life. Life is so something that sometimes you don't understand. So the life that we have cherished and live up to, the life that we have hold, the life that people have used their money to cherish, the life that people have used money to acquire, the life that people have spent their time to look for. Today, look at how the life is. The life at the foreground is not a life that seems good to you because you cannot move. You can't go to the parties that you used to go you can't go to the places that you used to go because it's the foreground, it's the focus, it's the physical things that are scaring you. But I want to introduce you to one life that is at the background. That when is the invisible life, the life that does not perish, the life that Jesus has, that so that when you are facing some turbulence at the foreground of life, which is disaster, which is fear, which is panic which is pandemic, which is so many things, you tilt your mind to the life at the background. That life is everlasting life. That life is what Jesus, when he gives you, you will never be afraid. He says that do not fear those who can kill this body. Coronavirus can touch your body. It can touch you. But your soul is in the hands of Jesus when you give your life to him. So I want to introduce you to Jesus. I want to also encourage you that if you know him, hold on to him very well. And know that a, long, a man's life, when you read Luke chapter 12, verse 4 to 5, and then 15, I want us to read 15, Luke chapter 12, verse 15. They said, watch out, be on your guard. Then he said to them, watch out, be on your guard against all kind of greed, life does not consist in the abundance of your possession. I met a friend, one of my friends who is a contractor, and then he, he was giving me the narration of what really happened in China. And he says that, Sir, Chairman, people died. I saw people dying. I saw poor people dying. I saw also saw rich men. I know some of the rich guys who coronavirus have killed them. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of your possession. Coronavirus doesn't know that you are a child. It doesn't know that you are old. It doesn't know that you are young. It doesn't know that you are black or white. It doesn't know any identity. What he knows is attacking you. So when it gets to this time, it is where you have to rely on the background of life. The invisible Jesus, the power of Jesus. So that whatever may happen whatever may happen whatever may happen your life is saved your life is in the hands of jesus so it have gotten a, a time that what who we should fear in this world is the lord almighty jesus christ i've learned so many things in life for the past six months about life life is not how much wealth you gain life is the opportunity of the grace 
that God has given you to breathe. Life is as, as you stay. Life is the mercy and grace of God. When you have that, you fear God. Please, fear God. God is so supreme and so mighty. If anyone does not know God, use this covet to experience the greatness of God. Why am I saying so? There are a, a pandemic that have come that medicines are not able to be developed. And people are dying. And people are using all sorts of things. And it's not working. There's a great God up there. He, there's a great God, invisible and mighty. I fear God. Revere God and serve him. Change your mind about life. If you have even big and nice Porsche cars, it's good. But where are you taking it down at this time? Who are you meeting with? You can't shake hands. You can't move. When you touch a place, it must be disinfected. You yourself have become an obstacle. You have become a person who is a suspect. Everyone in this world now is a suspect because you don't know who you are meeting and you are who you are coming. What kind of life is this? This is why you must look at the background of life and his Jesus. He is the only who can make life better and he's the only one that you have to look to. Why? Because the word of life or the full background I am talking about it is not what you think you must have. When you read 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Paul made a very serious statement there. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 19. And he made a statement that if this life, if this life, if only for this life we have hope, this life that we in, we are in now, that we have hope, in Christ, then we of all people must be pitied. So, if in this life that we have hope, that this life someone is thinking that oh, he wished tomorrow should change and then he, there's a vastly quickly developed, he takes it up and continue with the normal life. How he used to be, how he used to make things, how he have to go fly, move around and everything so that things are getting normal. So, or things get normal for him. If that is life that you are hopeful, then please, you need to be pitied. You need a life in Christ that when you die, you can be resurrected. A life in Christ that brings hope. A life that was able to resurrect Jesus back. The life that was able to resurrect Lazarus. That is the kind of life that, so if it is this normal life that you want to come back to it, then the Bible says, Paul is saying that you are someone that must be pitied. You, because that is not the kind. I think that people are looking at how best to cure this uh, coronavirus, how best to get things well, get into things that are things are better. Please, that is not the kind of life that Jesus gives. Jesus gives you life that will let you stand and life that will let you move on. I humbly want to share with you a story of a once a toxic professor who has done things very well. He has made things very, very nicely. He couldn't see things about his life very well. And he thought that, oh, let me find other ways to make things happen and get it right. Then he tried to look at things, check make sure that things are well he looked for researches and other things have been doing researching and look, looking at things that things will go very well but what he said here that they are foreground of things right one in front and one at the back the seen and then on the scene the invisible and the spiritual ones the one behind us and the one in front of us but what we need to know that there is a background and that background is Jesus Christ I humbly want you to ask your life and try everything in him I want to summarize this by uh, one of the uh, uh, one of the fine gentlemen that I like about him who was called Tom Chislom uh, who uh, brought in the song Great is Thy Faithfulness and he was born in 1800 
this gentleman was born in 1800 in the very age he struggled with deliberating health concerns he have been struggling he got saved moving to so many things and he has struggling his impaired health affected almost everything he did it caused him to fail almost everything he tried everything he tried everything he did they didn't work well so thomas was a christian who loved to write poetry so thomas chislam a christian everything he did everything he tried everything went because of his health conditions and one day in the midst of ever-changing disappointing for foreground of his life looking at the foreground and things of how he had failed and everything he sat down and wrote a poem about the faithfulness of god and it was a simple poem pen in faith and now the song that is sung around the world that great is thy faithfulness written about thomas tom chislam what did he do that in everything of the situation that he has moved around and he couldn't work all looking at the foreground of life that are challenges are problems and everything he said great is that faithfulness why is he saying so he feared god that in everything of the foreground of life there's a background that whatever happened even if i die today the lord is faithful brother sister the lord we are serving is a faithful god the lord i want i'm introducing to you is a faithful and mighty god in the midst of every trying moment and difficult times like this great is that faithfulness the foreground of life is the difficulty you are facing today but the background of the invisible is what jesus has already done he has he died on the cross he was buried on the third day he rose he served the kings of kings and lords of lords he knows the end of coronavirus he knows the beginning it didn't it wasn't surprise to him it didn't take him by surprise he knew it before it happened he knows where he's going and he knows where he's ending great is his faithfulness great is his mercy he's a loving god he's a father who never never deserts his children he will never take his children to a pasture and he will leave them trust in him in trying times in good times in laughter times in time like this trust in him things will get if things get better as we wish so be it great is thy faithfulness if things also don't get as we wish great is thy faithfulness the world is moving in his palm in his calendar in his activity you may think that things will come back to normal for you to have it perhaps it may or it may not but great is thy faithfulness great is his faithfulness he is the lord of lords and kings of kings so foregrounds of life should not put you behind but watch the background of life the background of life is jesus who is always behind you the good shepherd who takes the children to pasture and bring them safely the good shepherd who knows what he fills his children with pray let's commit ourselves unto the lord study the bible read the bible meditate on the word of god let it not dishearten you let not satan confuse you don't shift your focus to things don't think that when you sit and you all you you lie down or you dream you dream about death you dream about things that are scary no look at the background he was the lord the lord almighty and jesus at the wedding at the Cana. he was also at lazarus death and he wept why he's the lord who knows everything he's the lord of yesterday the lord of today peter made one statement that lord we have followed you all this what shall we can he says whoever that followed me in this word he will never never be disappointed if you have missed sisters brothers he will get it here and in the world also to come in the life to come he will also why he is the lord of the foreground and the love of the background let this life of foreground shouldn't scare you for you to at least be disarray about things but the life of the background there's a solid rock behind you he was with the israelites he led them 
He never, never disappointed them. He took them to Cana. May he also be the life of you. So the background of life changes things. It gives you focus and it gives you mindset and it gives you things. Great is that faithfulness. The Lord keep you. The Lord bless you. And may the Lord hold you in these times as we are in in these challenging times. Ghana will be well. Ghana will stand. Ghana will continue. Ghana will move on. Nothing will disarray us because we have the background of life with us. And he is Jesus. Let's all encourage ourselves in these times and hold on to because when you live your life in the hands of Jesus, you sleep and you sleep well. The disciples, Peter woke me up that we are getting drowned. Don't you see? Don't you see? We are getting drowned. At that time, Jesus was sleeping in the boat. He woke up and the life of the background, he displayed the life of the background. When he wake, when he lifts his hands up, things will get, and he knows the time, the formula. There's a song that says that he has seasons and times in his hands. This season also shall pass, and the season of redemption shall come. The Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, and the Lord hope you, hold you in this time. And we all say amen to the glory of the Lord. Shall we humbly pray? You are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. Oh, you are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. You've got times and seasons in your hands. You called for light out of darkness. Oh, you don't need a man to be the God you are. You have chosen to call me your own. Oh, you got times and seasons in your hand. Oh, you got for life out of darkness. Oh, you don't need a man to be the God. But you have chosen you to call me. Oh, you are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. You are God from beginning. For light out of darkness, you, you caught for light out of darkness. You don't need a man, but you have chosen.
you are God of yourself. I want that this time for us to pray. Lift the name of God name higher. Of Jesus. The foreground, the background, all are in his hands. The Lord is great, the Lord invisible God, the Lord is mighty, the Lord is supreme, He is greater over everything, He knows everything, He knows everything. Even He knew before COVID-19 came. Let's give Him the glory, let's give Him His greatness that He knew. 